This is a very short talk on tenosynovial giant cell tumors. And for those of you who are old enough, as old as me, to remember this, these tumors used to be called giant cell tumors on the t of the tendon sheath when they occurred on fingers and pigmented villonodular synovitis in large joints such as the knee. The both terms are now frowned upon, but catch me not using them. Although I'll confess, I'll use them in parentheses. So today we divide them in based on either location or growth pattern. Location is intraarticular and extraarticular, and PBNS is the classic intraarticular tenosynovial giant cell tumor. And then you also could divide them based on growth pattern as localized and diffuse. Most of the lesions in the fingers are localized. Those at enlarged joints are diffuse. So as with every tumor, there are features that are consistently present and there are features that are sometimes present. There are features that are diagnostically very helpful and then there are features that are somewhat helpful. These features, specifically the mononuclear cells, are both consistently present and helpful. And so I'll focus on those cells. All of the other features may be seen and are helpful, but not in every case. This is a 50-year-old male presented with a knee mass and locking of the knee. And what you'll notice here is this sort of villous configuration that look very brown. There are essentially only two conditions that can do this. The brown is largely because of the hemosiderin. This could be either tenosynovial giant cell tumor, diffuse type involving the knee, which this is. Alternatively, the differential diagnosis includes hemosiderotic synovitis. This is not the case we're discussing, but this is another classic example of a gross of a tenosynovial giant cell tumor. This was of the diffuse type. It has these yellow areas, which are often foam cells, and then these brown areas, which are driven somewhat by hemosiderin. So back to our case, a very low par. Remember, this was a 50-year-old with a knee mass. You'll see this very florid papillary configuration, the papillary configuration and mononuclear cells. This is what you're looking for to make a diagnosis of a tenosynovial giant cell tumor, the diagnostic mononuclear cells. So what makes these cells diagnostic? One, they're monotonous. Two, they have this moderate eosinophilic cytoplasm, very distinct cytoplasmic membranes. Three, they have these vesicular nuclei with, with slightly prominent nuclei. And four, and you don't always see this, but if you see hemosiderin within these cells, that is near classic for tenosynovial giant cell tumor. Again, those four features, monotonous nuclei, moderate eosinophilic cytoplasm, vesicular nuclei with slightly prominent nuclei, and hemosiderin-laden macrophages. Here's another tenosynovial giant cell tumor. This was recurrent in a 52-year-old male. This was of the diffuse type. This sort of aggressive behavior in the fingers is extremely uncommon. Even more uncommon is a malignant variant of this tumor, and I will not be discussing that variant. Here's what the histology showed, a very low power view. You could see a fair amount of fibrosis here. Again, that fair amount of fibrosis. But now we are seeing multinucleate giant cells that we did not see in the prior example. But the dominant cell are the mononuclear cells. Here we go again, the giant cells, the mononuclear cells with that moderate amount of eosinophilic cytoplasm, vesicular nuclei, prominent nucleoli. Unlike the previous case, this time we have no hemosiderin. Although we're lucky now, we have giant cells which is helpful. And just another high power view of those classic giant cells. There's something here trying to be a mitotic figure. If you see mitotic figures, that does not mean it is malignant. In fact, some of these lesions can show fairly brisk mitotic activity. 